conclude today keeping your spirit released. Amen. 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 Unite in faith, the Lord grant us light and abundance of life flow. Amen. 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 One of the things light allows you, as you know, it makes things visible, makes things clear. But it should also teach you how to don't get in the way of um, the life that the Lord has given to you. Thank you. The Lord has given you life and life to what? The fullest. Yes. But if you don't have enough light or not obedient enough, and sometimes, you know, like Paul, as we've been studying in um, Romans chapter 7, verse 15, Paul, you know, as Paul said, Paul said, I agree with, with the law of God. I'm in agreement. But he finds something is running in the way of his own agreement. He's working against his very, the very thing he's in agreement with. So one of the things, and as I said, light is not enough, but you need light will help. You need light and you need grace. Mm -hmm. Amen? You need light to see what's going on. Paul was clear in seeing it. He needed grace. This is why in chapter 8 he said, yeah, um, who will save me in the end of chapter 7? Amen? Mm -hmm. Thank God for Jesus Christ. I need something. I can see what's wrong, but I can't get out of it, but I need the grace mm -hmm. to get past it. Amen? Yes. Now, in, in the series, Keeping Your Spirit Released, we, we, this, this series came off the deepest verse in the New Testament, which is Luke chapter 12, 49 and 50. Christ said, He came to cast fire throughout the earth. He came, as you'll see, and I'll show you today, you again, to release life. But He was being circumscribed. And we look at the word circumscribed in, in the scripture, it's a constraint, limited. He's being limited. He cannot do the very thing that He came to do. Mm -hmm. Now we, as we learn in Colossians chapter 2, verse 11 to 12, we will touch back on the scripture. We have also been circumcised just like Christ. But many of us, even though we've been circumcised, we still struggle to keep the spirit released. In other words, to say you've been circumcised, your spirit has been released. The flesh that has encased it, amen, because of sin, that the spirit cannot be released. And the spirit was, was no longer um, full of life, amen. Both this, you have two things happening right now which should make it easy. Your spirit is regenerated. The car that didn't have a starter now have what? A starter. Right. Amen. The car that didn't have a starter now have a starter. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, amen, on top of the car have a, have, have a starter now, amen, it has been open to release. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. You now, your spirit is regenerated and that which was limited, it is like a car that didn't have air in the tire. The tires are pumped. Mm -hmm. Amen. The circumcision is to release the starter, is to release your regenerated spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yes. And we want to be able to operate in that state knowing we have been regenerated. The, the Bible calls it born again. You have been born again, you have eternal life, and you have been circumcised, meaning that which has been circumscribing you, limiting you, restricting you, putting boundary upon you, have been set, set you free. Yes. The only boundary you should have now is the boundary of love. Yes. Love yeah. should dictate how you move, when you move, and every everything. The Bible says it constrains you yes. and propels you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. That becomes the only boundary, but otherwise you should be able to flow. So Christ, vice versa, he came in the fullness of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in every way he was like God, yes. but he said he was being circumscribed. Mm -hmm. He knew what he said for this purpose I came. He knew exactly. He came with the power. He knew what to do, but something was limiting his ability to do that. And we learned what that is in Mark 10, 38. He said, I need the baptism of affliction. I need the baptism that will remove the restriction that I can pour out my spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen? In the name of Jesus. And he accomplished his task. And he accomplished the task for us. But we must know how to walk in that process. If not, there almost was no point in regenerating us, circumcising us, and pouring out the spirit. Does that make sense? Before we look at the, uh, what we're going to look at today, uh, what I'm hoping, the life is there. We have an abundance of life, life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping the Lord give us enough light that we see and we have enough faith. Because uh, one of the things, the way you're, all of this, how your regeneration works, how your salvation works, and how amen, the release is going to work, it's all going to be depend on what? Mm -hmm. Faith. Because meaning Christ doing it all and you have to believe you have received it all. And stand on that in that position in a convicted way so it can come out. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay, uncle, before in in the Luke scripture when he said, Christ said, I came to cast fire upon mm -hmm. the earth. 
but um, he couldn't get it done. All right. Refresh my memory. Is it the reason because the time was not set for it to be done? No, he didn't get past to the, he didn't, he, 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 the time, his death has not have been a yet. Mm -hmm. Until his death, he can't release the fire. Mm -hmm. it, it, you remember the scripture must always be tied in with John chapter 12, verse 24. Mm -hmm. Unless a grain of wheat amen, falls, into, falls the into the ground, ground. not just fall into the ground, mm -hmm. more to that, and die, mm -hmm. it cannot create anymore. Mm -hmm. If he don't die, the very life, he came with the fullness of God, meaning everything God wants to do is in him. Mm -hmm. But it's casing, it's like a pack of suitcase full of everything. Unless the suitcase open, all this stuff in him can't come out. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in Hebrews chapter 2.10, he said he came to bring many sons to glory. But you'll see as we go through the prophet, he can't make us sons of glory unless he released the glory that is trapped where? Mm -hmm. In him. Right. So if he don't die, this is when he tells Peter, Peter God, you don't die. You don't get behind me. Because if I don't die, you can't become a son of glory. Mm -hmm. He will have it all, but nobody else can what? Okay. Get anything. Right. When he died, when the grain of wheat fall into the ground, Amen. Then many more can come up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Many, many more. He's able to release the life, as you'll see. Uh, and I'll show you very soon what God wants. But, but for God to get it here, it needs to come in a container. Mm -hmm. And for it to be received by the humans, it needs to come in a human vessel. This is right. The word has to become flesh. The life has to become flesh. The light has to become flesh. And it has to be compatible with us that it can transform. Because flesh begotten, flesh. God wants sons of spirit, and spirit begotten, spirit. spirit. Amen. So he has to come in a container, amen, like us, to transmit it to us. One, to atone for us, and second, to transmit for us in the name of Jesus. But it's not a simple task. So I want to show you, um, where were we going just now, too, before you ask me that question? We're talking about faith. I thought I'd ask about the scripture. I guess maybe I didn't get there. Amen. You didn't mention the scripture, Matthew or Mark. I meant to. No, that's what I was just talking about. Anyway, it's okay. Amen. So yes, the Luke, uh, Nikki chapter 12, verse 49 and 50 must be tied in with, with, with John 12, chapter 12, 24. Amen. And then the baptism you'll go through is Mark 10, 38, the baptism of reflection. Because we learned in Matthew 3, 21, you had already baptized already. Mm -hmm. Amen. But that's the baptism of righteousness to come in right standing with God. But this is the baptism, Mark 10, 38 is the baptism of release. Mm -hmm. How do you release? This one ties in with John 12, 24. Unless you die, you can't release what's in you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Unless you die, you can't be released. Mm -hmm. Amen? It is the same thing in Hebrew. Amen? Unless there's a death, the new covenant cannot be what? Inaugurated. Yes. The old covenant would what? Stand. Mm -hmm. Right. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. In the name of Jesus, to God be the glory. glory. So, we want to look at a couple of things, you know, um, what Jesus came to do and, and, and how oh, he's going to get it. Let's look quickly first at um, Luke chapter 19. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 19, at verse 9 and 10. This is the story of Zacchaeus, I'm sure you remember. Yep. Luke chapter 19. You'll see the disciples, they, they understood this to a certain degree. Actually, actually, actually uh, what did I say? Luke chapter 19, I want verse 9 and 10. Yes. So you know the story with Zacchaeus. He's a very bad man, he's a publican, he's a cheat, etc. Mm -hmm. Amen. And and and, the, and if and he, to, this you know the Bible put chapters, but these were just like one long letter. Because Luke chapter 19 flows directly off of chapter 18. Mm -hmm. Chapter 18, Christ is talking about the rich man who is a very good man. He's young, he's very good. Amen. And and, and he actually come to Christ and said, What what do I need to do to be safe? Mm -hmm. And Christ said, You know the things you need to do. Amen. Only your mother and father love the Lord our God. Amen. With, with, with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. Because these things I've done from I'm a child. You got then there's just one more thing for you to do. Sell all your rich and give to the poor. Mm -hmm. He went away sorry, couldn't do it. We have Zacchaeus is a very old man, been cheating, robbing and, uh, people for a very, very long time. The next chapter, chapter 19. Amen. 
you think the young man who have not had a long time yet to get so into money, so clingy to money, would be able to do what Jesus asked quite easy. But he couldn't. Zacchaeus, who had been cheating people, and the young man was he's very good, he was doing all the right things, very bad. Yet, as you said, because Jesus said, because salvation has come to your house, because I have come and give you power to free you, he could give way half of his wealth and pay back anybody he cheat four times. Mm -hmm. And the only reason he can do it, not because this bad man suddenly um, wanted to, but because a power was given to him to do it. Mm -hmm. Amen? So as a result. So he does going to pick up, the, uh, just give us some background on the story, verse 9 and 10. Hallelujah. Actually, yeah, let's do verse 9 and 10. And Jesus said to him, Today the messianic, the spiritual salvation, come to all the members of this household, since Zacchaeus too, amen, is a spiritual son of Abraham. But we know to become a son of Abraham, the Bible says you have to have faith. You become a son by Abraham, the Bible teaches us this from Galatians, by faith. Amen? Can Abraham receive the promise by what? Faith. Amen? Yes. And then look and see verse 10 said now, For the Son of Man came to seek, Christ came to seek something and to save that which was lost. Mm -hmm. So he came to go searching and to save all that was lost from God. Right. So this is the fire. He said, I come to go search out everyone and save them. Mm -hmm. This is the Luke, chapter 12, verse 49. He came to go find them and save them. To, this is the mission, this is the very thing. He said, I come for this very purpose. This is why he rebuked the, the, the disciples in Luke 9 when they go, let's cast fire. You, go, you, go, you don't know the kind of spirit. The Son of Man did not came to destroy. I came to seek and save. I came to save. The, the reason I came, the fire that I come to cast is to find and what? Mm -hmm. Save. Mm -hmm. Even the Zacchaeus, I came to find them and Save them. The worst of the worst I came to find and save. Mm -hmm. And the best of the best, like the, the rich man that is good, I came to what? Find him and save him. So whatsoever was circumscribed in Zacchaeus' case, it seemed like greed and wickedness was circumscribing. But because salvation, salvation, remember, his freedom came to him, is dislodged from what was controlling him, making him do it. And the Bible showed a radical change. He is dislodged in such a radical way that he can give back, give away half of his success and pay back four times the amount to anybody he cheat. Hmm. So the power welcomes this. The power, amen, to free him is radical. What Christ come to cast in his seeking and save him, amen, it is a radical force. Yes. Your whole reason for living. Everything shifts. shifts. There's a paradigm shift. Yeah. If I can take you from this room and put you into a freedom, it's radical. Yep. 180, degree. 180 degree turn. Amen? In Jesus' name. Amen. So the Lord shows us this in Luke 12. He said, for this purpose I came to the earth. Mm -hmm. Christ didn't just came on vacation. He said, I came to seek something specific. God created you, and the Bible teaches us He didn't create man to lose him, to keep him. But He lost it. He lost what He, what he had created for His own purpose. Mm. So He sent His Son, filled with the Spirit, and said, I want you to bring it back. I want you to save it. I want you to find it. Mm -hmm. This is why Christ said, You didn't choose me, I choose you. I am the one hunted. Mm -hmm. You, I seek you out. I seek you out. He came and he found Peter and all of them. He comes to us. And then he released the fire to save us. To dislodge us from what is circumscribing us. Can we follow? See where we're going here. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now this is not a simple thing. If you turn to chapter 18. Chapter 18. And this, this is the very story I was telling you about. Amen? Let's pick it up from verse 22, chapter 18, from verse 22. We're only going to read a, a few. Just to 26, 22 to 26, you're going to see. The disciple quickly realized this process. They go, nobody can, oh, who can be saved? This thing is too difficult. But there was one came for a specific purpose, filled with the anointing. The Bible said for Jesus, amen, in the book of Acts, how he was filled with the anointing, strength, power, and ability, Amen? How he came to seek and save all those that was harassed and dejected. Mm -hmm. Amen? 
Verse 22 read, And when Jesus heard it, because the young man, he threw in off the, the scripture before, the young man said, Amen. Al, you don't have to go there, but just to give you background. Mm -hmm. And he replied, All these I have kept from my youth. He said, All the things, you know, that verse 20. Jesus telling him, You know the commandment, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not um, do not witness falsely, honor your mother and father. You got, I do all of this. Amen. Verse 22 said, And when Jesus heard it, he said to him, One thing you still lack, sell everything that you have, and divide the money among the poor. And you will have riches, and you and you will have rich treasures in heaven, and come back and follow me. Become my disciple, join my party, and acknowledge and accompany me. Verse 23, so that's, the, that's what Jesus tells him, sell everything and then come follow me. Verse 23, but when he heard this, he became distressed and very sorrowful, for he was rich, exceedingly rich. You want me to get rid of everything? I've worked so hard to get that my family has given me, because yes, come follow me, my purpose is greater. Amen? Verse 24, Jesus observing him that he became very sorrow, sorrowful and distressed, said how difficult it is for those Amen. Who have wealth to head to the kingdom of God. Sometimes I hear people preach the scripture, the rich can't head to the kingdom of God. The scripture never said that. It said it is difficult mm -hmm. because they are more attached. So you need a power. Amen. That the same way as Zacchaeus that was so rich and wicked. He didn't just rich. He's rich and not good. I need something to change him that he's going to give way half and willing to pay back for that. I need a radical move in him. And the spirit is a radical move. First, it regenerates you, circumcise, and release. And we need to stay in this radical move that happened. Like how Zac Zacchaeus' spirit can pour forth, and the wickedness is overrun. Amen? And the good is poured out, so it must be in our life in every situation and circumstances. Hallelujah? Yeah. Jesus went on speaking. For it is easier for a camel to enter through a needle eye than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Now look at verse 26, the people observing it, and 27. And those who heard it said, then who can be saved? Who can be saved? Then it's impossible to be saved. To be saved, I need someone to have a powerful force to dislodge me and the rights to transform me. Or to reconnect me. But Jesus said, this is the reason I came. Satan had one sin coming. Satan's position was just as these people observed. Now none of you can be salvaged by God. You're all contaminated. You're all wicked. You're, you're, you're scheming. You're lying. You're cheating. There's nothing good in you. But Jesus said, I came to seek you. And I can fix you. I can save you. Amen. He said, I don't care how bad or what you have done. I'm going to hunt you down, and I'm going to save you. Amen? Amen. So then Jesus followed up what they said and said, But he said, What is impossible, no man can save you. With man is possible with God. He said, It's impossible with man, but not with God. God can both find you and dislodge what's circumscribing you. Hallelujah. And he showed it. He regenerates and he circumcised. And we want to stay in the regenerated spirit and we want to stay circumcised. Something we are grateful we are regenerated and we have eternal life. This whole focus of this message is how to stay circumcised. And we talked about this much last week. Just like how you are placed in Jesus, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, where no condemnation. If you don't want to constantly feel shame and guilt and constantly, amen, give the enemy opportunity to accuse you or give your own consciousness opportunity to accuse you of what you are believing, thinking, doing, and interplaying, you need to stay abiding in Jesus. The Bible says there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. So I need to constantly, as you'll see, remind myself, Amen. And bear testimony. Father, I thank you. You have placed me in Christ Jesus where no condemnation can befall me. Not from myself, not from the enemy, not even from you, Father, because you have put me in Jesus where no condemnation can reach me. Can you see it, church? Amen. 
If you stop reinforcing this and standing here and moving here, you're going to find if you don't condemn you or other people or the enemy, the only body won't do it is God because he has positioned you. Mm -hmm. But I promise you, every time you dislodge from Jesus, you will find naturally you become susceptible to condemnation from something or someone, mm -hmm. including yourself. When you're in Jesus, just like all the power dislodged Zacchaeus' wickedness, you see the young man in Luke 8 took this position. Almost thing you ask, amen, the Lord command, honor your father, don't commit adultery, I can do it all. So Jesus said, okay, if you can do all this, can you do this? What he was trying to show him, there are things you can't do without what? Me. Me. You cannot ward off condemnation without what? The Lord. And verse 2 of chapter 8 of Romans said, Amen? For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, just like the one before, in Christ Jesus, no condemnation. No, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus keeps you free from sin and death. So if I'm going to stay away from sinning and participating in death, I need to once again stand on the position, reinforcing the testimony. Father, I thank you and place me in Christ Jesus where the law of the spirit of life moves me and leads me and keeps me and keeps me free from every form of sin and death. Every time you come out of here, the law of the spirit of life will not work for you and you cannot avoid what? Sin and death. You see, many of us sometimes we keep sinning and keep creating death. And you keep fighting like Paul in Romans 7 to stop the sinning and death instead of fighting to stand in the position you're in. Do you understand? If you stand in the position you're in, there's no need to fight sin and what? Death. Because the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus will work and not. It's its job to keep you. The same power that dislodged the chaos will keep you dislodged from sin and death. I will keep you dislodged, amen, from condemnation. Show me a sin. When I say to Bishop Fraser, I can't stop, amen, I'm condemning myself over the things I'm doing. And typically it's because if they're condemning themselves, they're practicing in sin and death. They can't stop that. And the law of the spirit that's supposed to keep me free, don't you? What I try to teach them, okay, you need to learn abiding. They go, what should I do to stop? Should I just stop thinking this way or believe I'm like, we don't have time for that. We have to win the first position to get the effect position. You don't go after the effect position by moving the cup, by coming off the cause position. Mm -hmm. Abiding is what stops condemnation. Abiding is what allows the law of the spirit of life to work and what stops sin and death. So you have to learn how do I abide or stay in the position? It'll be like Eli. If Eli don't want to hurt himself, he got to stay with his mommy and daddy who can protect him and see for him and guard him because he hurts himself because he can't take care of himself. But we cannot take care of ourselves. The rich man needed this right price. Said, Go get rid of everything that you put security in and put yourself into my care. Zacchaeus put himself, he said, today, spiritual salvation has come to your house and every member. Put yourself in my care and immediately... He was dislodged to give the very thing. He used to cheat people to get it. Now he's giving it away what? Mm -hmm. Freely. Mm -hmm. Somebody said Jesus is holy. Jesus is holy. Jesus is faithful. Jesus is faithful. Thank God he seek me. Thank God he seek me. And save me. And save me. Say, so I gotta tell somebody. I gotta tell, tell somebody. somebody. Jesus is seeking them. Jesus is seeking them. And he comes to save them. And he comes to save them. He can dislodge. He can dislodge. Anything. Anything. Or anyone. Or, anyone. or situation. Or, or force. Or force. That is circumscribing them. That is circumscribing them. So thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So you, you need to see this process. Of what's going on here. The Lord came to see. He said. Amen. Mm -hmm. For this purpose I came into the earth. Mm -hmm. I came to find them. And I came to save them. So when the disciple go let's destroy them. He go. Okay you're clearly not in the spirit. Because the spirit's thermostat is set on what? Seek and save. It has two simple moves. Seek and save. Mm -hmm. It has a position it does it from. Abide it. Amen? You must abide to stop. Because, forget about even your ministry. If you can't abide to avoid, to ward off 
personal or self-condemnation, giving the enemy opportunity to condemnation, environment condemnation, you ain't going to able to do ministry, not effectively. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and then you need to abide so the Spirit can teach you the things of life, beliefs of life, thoughts of life, words of life, in an action and interplay of life. In the name of Jesus. Let's continue the process so we can conclude this process. In Jesus' name. So, we want our circumcision to work just like we want. No condemnation to befall us. And we don't want sin and death to befall us. We don't want lack of circumcision or the closing or the activities of the flesh. Amen? To shut down the release spirit. We want to be able to operate like Zacchaeus. To be able to release. We want to be able to release. And to do this, we have to abide because as you'll see, your circumcision is where? In Christ Jesus. Let's quickly pick up back. Colossians chapter 2, 11 and 12, please. Then we're going to move forward. Then we're going to move forward in, 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 what I, in, in, in what the Bible shows us is the um, how did the Lord accomplish just light, the enlightenment. Because remember, all the life is released. It's the lack of light or obedience. You either, you either don't see it or you keep, you're disobedient. You don't abide. You go, listen, you must abide for no condemnation to work. You must abide for the law of the Spirit to work. You must abide for sin and death not to touch you. You must abide for the release spirit to take place. For my seek and save to happen. It has conditions. It has conditions. Amen? Are we at Colossians? 2, 11 and 12. Thank you. Hallelujah. Teach me to abide. Lord, I cannot do anything without you. Teach me to abide. Hallelujah. Verse 11 and 12 reads, In Him. Where is it? It starts right away. Right away. Right. Amen? Position, position. Position, position. Amen? Actually, if you're mama, can you show 9 and 10, please? Is that possible? Yeah. Can somebody read 9 and 10 for me, please? Amen. For in him, the whole fullness of deity, the Godhead, continues to dwell in bodily form, giving complete expression of the divine nature. So Christ came with the fullness of the God and the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in bodily form. And it was given what? Full expression, seeking and saving, seeking and saving. Amen? And you are in Him, uh -huh. made full and having come to fullness of life. Uh -huh. you come? So, so you are in Him, and in Him you have come to the fullness of what? Life. So once you remain in it, you'll find the full life of him is flowing through you and around you. But once you come out of him, what happened? That fullness of life is not available to you. Because the fullness of life is in him. And if I want to have access, whether for myself or to give other people, I have to remain what? In him. The key is in him. This is the key. Continue, Mama. May full and having come to fullness of life in Christ, you too are filled with the Godhead, mm -hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and reach full spiritual stature. Amen. And He is the head of all rule and authority for of every angelic principality and power. Amen. So in Him, you come to the fullness of life. You are filled with the Godhead in bodily form. Too. So what you want to, how do I stay in a full state? The fullness is in Him. What makes you start to feel depleted? Forget about the condemnation. And forget about losing the law of the spirit, amen, of life in Christ Jesus and being touched by sin and death. But you lose the fullness, the ability to both to walk and to release once you come out of it. It's in him the fullness or the Godhead is in. You see, there are many, just for your life and to help. You know, we need to be, the Lord keeps us in, in our church focused here a lot. Stay full. We talk about this a lot. Stay what? Full or strong. We, we might give it different linguistics. Stay strong. Stay full. Don't get caught what? Empty. Stay ready. Someone ready is what? Full. We're always looking way to be what? 
more full. But you have to like, where is the fullness? There are many of us who want to be full, but we want to be full what? Somewhere else. I, I talk, share with you guys, even my car, I like to keep my car all the time what? Full. I like to keep every area of my life at all time filled. But the fill, the fullness is where? In Christ. We confuse this. On one hand, we want to do a lot and we want to be more. But we don't know where, where the fullness is. It's like you want gas and you don't know where a gas station is. You keep going to a, a superstore or you keep going to the desert and God, why can I never respond or deal with the people or things or get to it? But you're never in a position of fullness. You see, when you get this, you'll start to learn the fear of the Lord. I am afraid to be away from the Lord. I know condemnation will come. I know sin and death will come. I know I will lose the constant law, the constant happening, habitual way of what? Life. My belief will stop going in life all the time. My thoughts, my words, my manifestation. And I know I won't be able to deal with many things because I'm in a state of deplete or emptiness. Do you understand? The enemy, what he did with sin, he wanted to get you like the beginning when God was offering over the earth to one move. The Bible in a state of darkness and confusion and emptiness. The Bible says it was just emptiness and void. We don't want to be in a state of emptiness and void. We want to stay full. But the Bible teaches in, in Colossians 2, 9 and 10, Christ is at the fullness of the God there, the fullness of the deity is in him, amen, and we have been placing him amen, in the fullness of life. You cannot stay full in life. You might have, you know, you know there's a saying. Let that say it's a reality. Some of us are like this. If you're not a smoker and you go around smoker, mm -hmm. you didn't smoke, but people go, you had a smoker and you've been around smoker. What happens if you don't like to stay in it? You will come out and go, well, you have trace or flavors of a Christian, but that situation, should Christian be able to deal with it? You kind of look and you be here for a moment. But you weren't able to complete it. And the reason, you weren't full. Mm -hmm. Equally, nobody could not say you have never been there. Mm 